wherever you may happen to be and thank you for tuning in to episode 74 of Love at First Scent with me Percy Lays coming to you today from YouTube. I hope you're all safe and well wherever you are. I'm just going to do the usual thing of making sure that everything is working on the tablet. Now those of you who tuned in a couple of days ago uh, will be aware that uh, for the first time in a long, long time, actually, YouTube let us down with the technology. And it could be because of the fact that lots of people are doing these live streams at the moment. Lots of people are using their home internet connections. And I think it was at about the 20, 25 minute mark, uh, the, the, the chat facility just seemed to stop and people weren't able um, to send me little chat messages. Uh, I carried on with the video. Um, the, 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 the chat function seemed to work again. Um, but, but after about half an hour it came back, uh, but by then there was only about five minutes of the video left. So, um, a few of you uh, very wisely, very cleverly decided to message me on through another platform to let me know that that's what had happened. Um, so if it happens again, if one or two of you would be kind enough to just message me, probably the best way to do would be, be through Instagram, because then that pops up on this monitor that I'm looking at here just to say, look, we're trying to leave a comment um, and it's not working. And I'm, again, not sure what we could do about it, but at least I will know that the reason you're not commenting is not that you've all switched off because the video is awful, but because because you can't comment. So please keep um, the comments and the lows coming through now. I've, I've got a first one from Umberto saying hello. I will go through them, but we need to start by smelling a perfume. And then I will tell you exactly what it is that we're doing here today because this is another top 10. Some of you will be aware what the top 10 actually is. And I think we should just get this one. Hang on, I'm just going to fix that there because that then tells me what direction to point the bottles in. I think we need to get a, one fairly obvious one out of the way. Oh, the comments are coming through. I am I am not ignoring you. I will get to them uh, when we've done this first perfume, I promise. But I've just seen somebody saying it's snowing in Kent. Okay. Anyway, right. Let's start as we mean to go on. Let's get out the big guns. This is what we are smelling first today. Um, the one and only Chanel number no. five. Still probably the most famous perfume ever made. For those of you who don't know, it was composed by Ernest Beau, uh, 1921. Although this particular version is the, as you can see, is the Eau de Parfum that was uh, composed by Jacques Polge in the 80s. I, I think this is still the only perfume that has actually had a whole book written about it. Um, so you have all smelt this. I would um, love to know what you think of it because there are there are probably as many people out there who don't like number five as there are who do like one of them being being my mum. She says that it gives her a headache, and um, you, you find that th there is there is a sort of certain set of people who say that uh, very, very aldehydic perfumes do give them a headache. So anyway, um, this is this is precious stuff. So I'm just going to do the one spray. And it's not as though I don't know what this smells like because I I smell this so often. And I genuinely, genuinely adore it. I really, really love it. I know it's a terrible cliche, but I do seriously, seriously like this. Ah, here we go. Ah. I can see the comments coming. I promise I'm not ignoring you. I will I will get to them soon. This is just... Mm. I, 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 said, I said this in my book. I think I said this in my book. My book. Um, but this to me is the, is the absolute essence of, um, of stereotypically French sophistication. You know, we all have this idea of of um, national stereotypes and and obviously 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 there is as wide a range of different sorts of people in France as there is in Italy and Spain but that that very particularly haughty stereotypically French sophistication is I think what 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 is captured so 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 expertly in um, and number five but but there is also so much warmth to it for the for the for the two of you out there who have never smelled Chanel Number no. Five, it, it, it's a classic aldehydic fragrance. Well, it's a classic now. It wasn't a classic when it came out. It was probably quite revolutionary when it came out. Um, uh, so so gorgeous burst of sparkling aldehydes at the top, a, a kind of sandalwoody base, 
and then a heart of ylang ylang and jasmine and rose although it is very very abstract what makes it very interesting and you could also say what's made it stand the test of time is that it isn't a perfume where you can pick out individual notes except obviously for, for those sort of champagne bubble aldehydes because the florals are uh well, well the, the, the boundaries between them have been blurred very very expertly so that you don't know when you're getting from the jasmine to the rose to the ylang ylang um the different variations um smell uh, subtly and i suppose in some cases also not so subtly different from each other i almost considered for this episode uh getting out my bottle of the of the extra you know what the, the so-called pure perfume but i thought that um that wouldn't be appropriate because what are we doing today and why have we started with with the gorgeousness that is chanel number no. five well what we're doing is uh, i am running through my top 10 perfumes that i enjoy smelling the most on my better half otherwise known to regular viewers and readers as the long-suffering madame Perselais. Uh, a little while ago not that long ago i i, I took the plunge and um presented you with my rundown of the top 10 perfumes that I enjoy wearing myself. And then, which which kind of, in a way, turned out to be a sort of top 10 favourite masculine scents. Not quite, because there are some masculine scents out there that I think are excellent, but that I wouldn't necessarily wear on myself. So this is the sort of counterpart video, the top 10 perfumes that I enjoy smelling most on Madame Perselais. So in a way, you could, you know, kind of, sort of say that this is a top 10 feminine perfumes, but again, not exactly, because for an example off the top of my head, I think Chanel number no. 19 is, is an amazing perfume, gorgeous perfume, probably one of them, the, the finest ever constructed. Um, but, but, but I'm not a fan of it on Madame Perselais. In fact, if anything, I actually like wearing Chanel number no. 19 more on myself. So, so we won't see Chanel number no. 19 here. So the, this, this is an unashamedly personal list, but, um, but, but I, thought, I thought that's the way to go. As people have been reminding me, I, I mustn't um, overthink this because I'm very, very good at overthinking. And we've started with um, number five, and I will do. I will do comments in a sec because the other thing that I want to, I, I, actually, should we? What are those videos called where you, um, where you just sort of, what is it where you sort of listen to somebody eating something, or you? listen to the hoover running there there's a, there's an acronym or an abbreviation for those videos how about we sort of do a personalized video where personalized is just smelling number five <laughs> for a whole hour and and you see me going oh. it, it it's it's asmr thank you very much it's it still knocks me out it just immediately it, it, it just for a few seconds it just stops time and I go, and there's something about smelling this on hair as well. There is just something really, really, really seductive about smelling this on hair or, or catching it as somebody walks past you. One of the most intelligent assessments I have ever, ever read of um, uh, Chanel Number no. 5 is by Lizzie Ostrom, the writer who in her you know, perfume persona is known as Odette Toilette. And she has written a book, uh, came out a couple of years ago, three years ago, called Perfume a Century of Scents well worth checking out, highly recommended. There's a review of it on my blog. And she said that the reason why, one of the reasons why she thinks number five has stood the test of time is because Chanel have actually very cleverly tweaked it and adapted it as time has passed. And 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 they have made it fit the requirements of, of each particular time. The, the one time where it seems to be struggling actually to resonate with people is now. And maybe that is because it, you know, it, it, it is almost 100 years old. Next year it'll be celebrating its um, 100th anniversary. And, and I guess even the finest perfume in the world will struggle to resonate with an audience after 100 years, which is why we've had these various, like number five law, we've had number five au premier, which is also fantastic. This is the one time where actually it, it doesn't seem to be um, as, as financially successful as it used to be, although of course it is still extremely successful. And before I get to the comments, I just thought I would very, very quickly tell you a few that I love smelling on Madame Perselais, but that didn't make it onto this list. So very, very quickly, the ones that didn't make the cut, just so that I'm not keeping you in suspense. Estee Lauder's Youth Dew, I absolutely adore that. Also Estee Lauder's Beyond Paradise. Annie Goutal's Songe, 
another Chanel, uh, um, Coco, although we've got more Chanel coming. Ha I'm telling you now, there are two more Chanel's coming. D do you want to start having a guess about what those uh, may be? And also two from L'Artisan Parfumeur. I love Traversa du Bosphore on her, and also Nuit de Tuberose. Uh, in fact, generally, I like, I like Tuberose um, on her, although I'm looking at this thinking T Tuberose hasn't made it into the top ten. So... Thank you very much for tuning in. If you are watching live, thank you very much for tuning in. If you're watching the recording, please feel free to leave a comment, ask a question. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Please give me ideas for... Um, uh, I've gone blank. Please give me ideas for what you would like future videos to be. Um, and also, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, please give me hearts, thumbs up, likes, etc, etc. And we've got loads of comments, so I'll try and go through them really quickly. And, and I really, really love the fact that we are interacting. It's really, really exciting for me as well to find out where you all are. That's really gratifying. So, Umberto said hello. Frag Chaitan says hello from Chicago. Hello from Seattle, says Sabra. Floating Man says afternoon. Fahmi says hello, good night from Indonesia. It's snowing in Kent, says Christine. I mean, the weather has sort of taken a turn for the worse here in, in, in the south of England, but it's still quite bright. Uh, good afternoon from Berlin, says Sonic Sonic 69 Sonic. Ashfaq says hello. Is that an Amouaj Attar? I'm, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to do this next because there's a reason why this one is already out. Uh, Anna says hello from Madrid. I hope you are well. And, and a very, very, very special hello to everybody in, in Spain, sending you lots and lots of good wishes and good thoughts. Hello from Bulgaria, says Natalia. Hello again from San Francisco, said David A. Always glad to catch you. Thank you very much. Uh, great topic, says Floating Man. So hard to find really good female fragrance recommendations on YouTube. So much appreciated. Well, I, I hope you like these. I'm looking at these ones now, and you will find that they're all probably sort of either classics or modern classics. There's maybe one or two that you may be surprised by potentially, but this is going to be an hour mostly of perfumes that you guys probably know fairly well. Uh, Anna says, I received the red bottle last year from my husband of number five. Excellent. Love it. Hello from Edmonton in Alberta, Canada, says Keith. Thank you very much for tuning in. Q George, good afternoon. I thought Nama would be the obviously first one. Yes, you're right. And 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 it it, it is on the list, uh, but we'll sort of, I'll, I'll bring it out and I'll sort of say, look, just watch the Nama video. Um... Da -da 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 -da. Pema says, hello from South Korea. It's 11 p.m. here. Thank you very much for um, staying up. Good morning from Doha, says Rizwan. Thanks for tuning in. Very nice subject, says Susanna. David says, number five is gorgeous. Eric says, hello from Texas. Uh, Fahmi is agreeing that it's the one and only Chanel number five. Floating Man says something in a language that looks like Russian. And I can't read that. Hang on. Hang on, that says Natalia. That's that is Natalia, isn't it? Are you saying something to Natalia? Oh, so it's not so it's not Russian. It's Bulgarian, is it? Um, tell me what you said, because I can make out Natalia. Am I right? Utro or something? I don't know. Ooh. Um, Q George. Speaking of French chic, would be really appreciated if we could talk about more about Jean Patou and Caron. Okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe do a video of those. First time I've been able to catch one of your videos live, says Keith. Thanks for doing this at a time that works for me. Well, I'm so pleased we found a mutually convenient time. Is June on the list, says Umberto. Well, I will tell you now that it's not. I love, really, really love Dune, but, but, mm, well, watch this, what, what, just keep watching. Uh, <laughs> and Floating Man is asking you to be patient, fine. Um... Ashfaq says, I can detect the indoles from Jasmine quite clearly, both on skin and air. I love the creamy floral heart that follows um, in uh, no, number five. Uh, Coco was shortlisted, says Eric. Y yes, but it hasn't made it in. The Madame Persolaise loves Coco much more than I do. Um, she really, really loves Coco. Is Bois d'Azil one of them, says Ashfaq. Find out. Uh, gosh, you, you've all, you're all really, maybe you're all getting your comments in there in case like YouTube glitches again, which is fine. Susanna is in Lisbon, uh, Anne Kalhar is in Sweden, Mystery Form says good morning from Canada, Thea says hello from USA, stay safe, absolutely, DB70 in London, did I know you were in London? Okay, fine, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Ashfaq says, would it not be fun one day if you suddenly find a creed that you like on Madame Persolaise, or even worse, she likes? It, it, yes, it would be fun, it would be, I would very much like that, so that I could then say that there is a creed that I like, but um, hasn't happened yet. 
Uh, ah, Floating Man says he is, it was good morning in, in Bulgarian. Ah, okay, thank you very much. And hello from France says Raf P or Pi. So thanks very much for all of those. And seriously, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, and, and thank you, a, a very, very special thank, thank you, uh, you know, on air, as it were, for the people who uh, have been very, very generous um, on coffee as well, as in KOFI, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. Hello from Serbia, says Anna. This is fantastic. We've covered so much of the world. Right, I'd like to do this little one. Um, oh, Anna has retracted the message. Oh, is that is that because you misspelled Serbia? It's okay. We forgive you. We're not, we're not checking your spelling here. It's fine. Um, I'd like to do this little one. Because this is this is an example of one that um, I, I don't have a full bottle of anymore, or, or I should say Madame Persolaise doesn't have a full bottle. And I was kind of taking these Netherlands, Frederick, thank you for tuning in. I was I was taking these from Madame Persolaise's collect connection and she sort of goes, what are you doing? Why are you taking all my stuff? The, this, we'll have to do this very, very quickly because um, as you can see, I've only got the tiniest few drops left in here of this. And, and actually it's... Um, not lasted terribly well. Um, th this is this is Gold Woman. Okay, when the Amouage Boutique in London opened, what's it, ten years ago, nine and a bit years ago, whatever. On the very first few days that it was open, I forget how it worked. But if you went in and you spent a certain amount of money, then you got. I think this is thirty mils. Yeah, you got you got. Uh, Gold Woman, or maybe it was any fragrance. I seem to remember it was actually Gold Man and Gold Woman. You got them in, in this little bottle. So Gold Woman is the second one that I would like to talk about, but I can't show you the proper bottle. And it's kind of appropriate. Yeah, that's, it's, I, I can smell now. It's probably because it's been opened so many times. Um, Madame Persolais actually had uh, one of the original bottles of Gold Woman, and she smashed it. She smashed it and she dropped it. There is definitely a connection between uh, Chanel Number no. Five and Gold Woman, composed by Guy Robert, released in 1983. One of the two scents that came out of, from from Amouage at the same time. They released Gold Woman and Gold Man at the same time. And it's it's very much as though Gold Woman is the sort of Arabian Chanel Number no. Five because it is in terms of structure and an aldehydic floral. But, but, but if if you can imagine such a thing, it, it pushes things into an even more opulent scale. Uh, the horror says Frederick. Yeah, it was it was tears were shed, divorce lawyers were consulted. Um, it so you know the 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 um, the Chanel Number no. Five florals are operating on this kind of creamy level of French sophistication. Here, Gold Woman is like. The aldehydes in Chanel Number no. Five are doing this kind of sparkly, um, elegant thing here. In Gold Woman, they're like, um, and and of course the the thing the thing that sets Gold Woman apart as well is its use of uh, the incense note. Um, so this is this is you know this is the Number no. Five woman who's. Um, if we want to, if we want to get like all E. M. Forster about it, and 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 sort of stereotypically and nationalistically and racially dubious, but I think you know what I mean. This is the um, this is the sort of Chanel Number no. Five woman who, who goes on a, a voyage around the world and discovers the heat of the desert and the sensuality of the desert and and the physicality of the desert and sort of thinks, yeah, Number no. Five is all well and good, but um, but but the thing that I want to be wearing when I'm, you know. In, in, in the tent in the middle of the desert enjoying my 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 evening um conversation is uh, is gold woman but I need to get Madame Persolais a proper bottle of this because this this isn't doing it and one thing you know how um uh, almost all of the amouage feminines uh, eventually come out in an x-ray form I've never smelt the x-ray of gold woman and I bet it is it is it is quite something. Uh, a few comments. Um, do, 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 do. So Natalia is saying, "Oh, oh, so that's now okay. I, now, now that you said what it is, so is it actually something like Dobriden? Okay. 
Good afternoon. It's afternoon in Bulgaria. Anyway, glad to be watching you personally. I appreciate your time and reviews here, and I appreciate all of you tuning in. Uh, Eric says, I dropped my first bottle of Donka. After the smell and nausea subsided, I rushed to replace it. That would, that would, um, that would cause a bit of olfactory damage as well, wasn't it? Mind you, I love that perfume. Really, really love that perfume. Okay, I think let's... What I will do is, because I'm sure there are some that you, you, you can guess that are going to be here. Q George has already said one of them. So let's, let's kind of try and get the obvious ones out of the way so that we start maybe getting to the, to the less expected ones, the more, the more, um, the more, uh, no, I don't want to say more interesting because they're all interesting, but just the less expected ones. So number three, as somebody already pointed out, is uh, Naema from Garlin, here seen in its, in its current incarnation, okay? This is, I believe, the only way that you can get Naema at the moment if you are going to get it. It's an EDP, which a couple of years ago, maybe the brand started releasing in the B-bottle format. Um, but I'm not going to spray it now. Number one, because, you know, when I picked it up, Madame Persolais shouts and says, I haven't got much of that one. I was like, yeah, okay, which, which, is, which is true, because she's, you know, she doesn't hold back when she, when she sprays. Um, but I'm not going to spray it now, because literally just the other day, I did a whole video on Nama. So if I'm really, really clever... What I will try to do, hang on, my lefts and rights, what I'll try to do is right now make a little thing pop up here. Is it going to be there? Yes, it should be there, shouldn't it? Or maybe it's going to be there. I will make a thing pop up above my head, probably here, which will be a link to, uh, to the Naima video that I did the other day. And I will also try to link to it in the video description below. Emergency exits, you know. Um, so, so let's not waste time talking about this because we did it just just the other day. But it has to be mentioned because I absolutely love it on Madame Persolais and don't ever want her to be uh, without it. So um, guess, guess, guess what another really, really obvious one is. I'm going to give you like 30 seconds to guess what like a super obvious one is that we'll do next. But that one we will spray. Uh, Floating Man says... Never smelled gold woman, couldn't get past the baby powder or nappy note, as my friend once remarked, in gold man. Is this, that's the aldehydes again, isn't it? Give it another try. And Sabra says, nope. Hang on, I've lost track now. What are you saying nope to? Um, nappy note, ew, that doesn't sound good, DB70. I think maybe they mean a clean nappy, um, that, that sort of powderiness. Let's do another obvious one in my rundown of the top 10 perfumes that I most enjoy wearing on the very, very long-suffering and patient Madame Persolais. Nobody's making any guesses. I'm holding it now. <laughs> Q. George gets it. Incoming. Portrait of a lady. Umberto says, credit to Vasa, who guards the classics. Y yes, actually, um, in, in relation to Naima. Hello. Hey, from Cornwall, says Rachel. Thanks very much for tuning in. Here we go. Better do this one as well. From Edition de Parfum Frédéric Mal, it's Portrait of a Lady. I think I've shown this bottle off to you before. This isn't the standard Portrait of a Lady bottle, but this was a limited edition that they did. Was it not this Christmas, but the but the Christmas before, I think. Uh, some of their best sellers had the this sort of abstract colouring pattern on the bottles with, with the colouring and the shapes meaning to, to represent... Um, the perfume. So let's let's let us let us let us actually spray this, even though this is precious stuff as well. And let's let's swoon all over again. Portrait of a Lady uh, came out in 2010, uh, composed of course by Dominique Ropion, um, became a huge huge success, and is now uh, generally considered to be a a modern classic, and rightly so. When I did my uh, top perfumes of the decade posts on persolace.com and actually um, I did a video on those as well I came up with 39 perfumes that I said that according to me were the best of the decade and all of the rest of them I said you can take in any order you want but if there was one that I would put at number one I said it would be portrait because because I do really think it's it's, it's the finest olfactory achievement of of the, the previous decade Wow, interesting. It's smelling today, maybe because of the other things I've smelled. It's smelling particularly woody today. It could be something to do with the, with, the, with, the, with the temperature in this room, or as I say, it could be because of what's being blocked out 
given what I've already smelled. Um, th this is... This, this is a terrifically rich, dusky, dark, sensual rose. Again, a very, very strong prominent, uh, very strong prominent incense note in it. Uh, peppery note, berry note, very, very strong dose of patchouli. And something that feels like a kind of Arabian oud inflection, even though Frederick Mal absolutely insists that there is no oud in it. If you look up uh, Frederick Mal interviews in the interview section of Persilase.com, there is one where he was specifically asked about whether there is oud in portrait of a lady, and he said there absolutely is not. But then, of course, what he and Dominique Ropion did was they thought, okay, well, what would it be like? What would portrait of a lady be like if we did put some oud in it? And that's led that led to their perfume called the Night, which is just also mind-blowingly amazing and also mind-blowingly expensive. But put that to one side. This is this this also on so many levels is so extraordinary because technically, I mean, the diffusiveness of it, the sillage that you um, that, that that you get from it, the, the distinctiveness. You know, there have been some copycats, and yet none of them achieve quite the same level of of precision you know it, it's the, the uh, frederick mal is very famous for going through lots and lots of modifications and iterations when he makes perfumes and you can see that here i mean everything is just so note perfect works like clockwork and i'm, ju I'm just sort of trying to think off the top of my head what might characterize the the perfumes that i'm most like smelling on Madame Persilaise, and I guess it's this, there's a sort of assertiveness about them, there's nothing wishy-washy, um, you know, these are, these are not wallflower perfumes, they're very sensual, I suppose, you know, I'm looking, looking at the, the, the ones that I haven't um, shared with you yet. Um, but there is also, I guess with the cleanliness of the incense note, there's also something that's very modern about Portrait of a Lady. Um, you, you you can't imagine it having been made, you know, in the twenties. Chanel Number no. Five absolutely has a retro feel to it. Nama has a has a kind of retro feel to it because of its handling of um, the rose portrait. I guess because it makes its materials quite transparent. They're luminous. They're illuminated. I guess that's what makes it feel modern. And also they're legible. This is. This is far less abstract than number five. Um, and I suppose in that sense, if you want to start getting conceptual about it, 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 it maybe displays a femininity that doesn't have to hide behind certain social codes anymore. It doesn't have to hide behind, I don't know, coyness. It doesn't have to hide behind artifice. Um, it doesn't have to hide behind the necessary ways that maybe women had to manipulate the system in order to get to where they were. You know, this is this is maybe from a time when women, women have got a lot more uh, liberty, a lot more freedom, a lot more agency over their own lives. Um, yeah, um, and I guess, I guess that's what sort of makes it interesting and 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 modern. Okay, We've done, we've done four, which is good, because we're not quite at the half an hour mark, but we must make sure that we don't take longer than an hour for the whole video. Uh, Natalia says, en passant, um, no, you won't be seeing that today. Floating Man says, poison. Now, see, I adore poison, but I very rarely smelt it on Madame Persilaise. I think, I think for her, that would be, that would be 280s. I don't think she'd enjoy wearing that. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Eric says I bought the bigger ad in that limited bottle. Great. Ashfaq is guessing what the what the um, what some of the other perfumes may be. Chalimar Vol de Nuit, perhaps. Uh, Eric says I wonder if I still have my Portrait of a Lady sample. Check it out. Ashfaq Portrait of a Lady has a Khaliji style composition. No wonder that it's so popular. Floating Man says wonder what you would have made of Malik Al Taif Extra from Arij Ladore, another rose heavy fragrance which some women really seem to be infatuated with. I need to find it and check it out. Um, and Ashfaq says, I wore almost five mils of Malik Al Taif whilst in Mecca in late 2019. It was my signature scent during the special trip. You don't mean in one go, right? I suppose you mean during that trip so that it made it a memorable... Okay. 
Rachel says Shamad. Oh, see, I adore Shamad. Really, really adore Shamad. And I've got some Shamad extra. But again, Shamad is, is one that I kind of prefer smelling on myself. So no, you will not be seeing Shamad. But that's a good one. That's a good one. Shamad, Shamad is great. Right, let's try and let's get, let's get the fifth one in there really, really quick. Ooh. <laughs> uh, okay, I know. Let's do this one next because the bottle is a bit messed up. Um, the, 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 the labels come off, okay? You can see that this is a Serge Lutens. You can see the colour. So what are people going to guess? I wonder what the lag is between me asking you a question and then you typing and then the response coming up on the screen. Ferminita Dubois, thank you very much, says Eric. Fantastic. Well, well done on the, on the colour spotting. See, that's why I just think you guys, there we go. David's getting in there as well. Anna says Ferminita Dubois, fantastic. Um, you, you don't need me. You don't need me for any of this. You're way ahead of me with all this stuff. But I actually enjoy this probably more, th more than you do. So it's fine, as long as we're able to keep going. Um, now, this is, this is, I thought it's the carnation one, says Q George, no. This is curiously one that actually, well, I, I guess, you know, without, without kind of sounding a bit dodgy about it, Madame Persolais wears it because she knows that I like it. She's not mad about this one. One thing that she says, I'll tell you, and, and I wonder how many of you will, um, uh, would, would sort of, um, oh, what have I done there, would, would get what she's talking about. She says that she very often stops smelling the perfumes that she's wearing. Uh, very often and very quickly. And and one thing that she actually uh, l is always on the lookout for is perfumes that she can keep detecting on herself. And she's amazed when I tell her that I can keep smelling a perfume on myself, well, very definitely uh, for a whole day. Um, you know, maybe not constantly, but I will be aware of it. Um, there is such a thing as an odour habituation threshold, isn't there? And, and we all have, I think, a slightly different odour habituation threshold. And that basically means the level at which our olfactory system basically sort of says, yeah, I just keep getting the same input now, I'm going to stop telling your brain about the fact that you're wearing this perfume. Um, and I suppose for a lot of sense, maybe maybe Madame Persolaise's odour habituation threshold is quite low. That's another reason why she loves wearing portrait because she says that she can keep smelling it on herself throughout the day. Another reason why she likes wearing Naima. But most things, like for example Feminita Dubois, I will have to say to her, absolutely it's still on you, I can smell it, and she'll sort of just shrug and say, well, okay then, well I hope something, somebody's enjoying wearing it. Um, but Feminita Dubois, um, absolute modern classic from 1992, Serge Lutens, uh, although this actually first came out when it was the Shiseido brand, uh, composed by Pierre Bourdon and um, Christopher Sheldrake. Widely sort of touted, that is not an RAF fly past, by the way, that's my stomach again, sorry. I promise I did, I actually just ate something before this video because I thought, let me, let me not start grumbling again. Um, widely regarded as reclaiming woody notes uh, for feminine perfumes, you know, hence Feminita Dubois, uh, the femininity of wood or woody femininity. Um, and y yes, absolutely, w what it is, is is a kind of woody perfume, you know, cedary, patchouli, but I always think of it as super classy potpourri. Um, pot potpourri gets a bad rep, right? You know, potpourri is usually the kind of thing where you have bits of bark and cinnamon and you sort of have to top up the oil and everything but but and and and, and it's a bit tacky and it's a bit cheesy and it's a kind of um well well, well a sort of unimaginative christmas present i suppose but potpourri doesn't need to be like that and it, it's it's the handling of the the spices and 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 the florals here that that i love because because it's it's, it's like somebody sat down and thought no i'm going to make i'm going to make the most amazing the most elegant potpourri imaginable. It, it's the elegance here that, and it's one of those ones that makes me swoon, you know, like Chanel number no. five, if ever Madame Persolais wears this, I just do this immediate, ah, oh, and now suddenly the world doesn't seem like such a bad place anymore, and I can take a breath and slow down and pause. Um, and, and I guess my tastes as well on her tend towards the sweet, the things that have a vanillic base, you know, resinous balsamic base, 
I'm looking at, at what's left, and that's certainly true of, of all five that are left. And this is this is definitely you know heading in that direction as well you know starting to get quite ambery and of course this is this is plummy this is boozy you know you think of things like opium um, th this this has got that it, it's it's the sort of modern late twentieth century update of opium um, with an incense note I mean it's it's many many perfumers um, have told me that when I interviewed them, that this is the one perfume that they wish they had made. It has tremendous admiration, and rightly so, um, from so many people in, in the perfume community. Oh, it's so good. You know what it's, it's making me think of as well now? It's making me think of um, uh, New from, uh, from uh, YSL, the discontinued New, by, by Jacques Cavalier, I want to say, I think really good but we're a bit behind because we need to do five and we've got 25 minutes so comments 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 uh ashfaq says yes over 15 days but at the start i wore about 20 oh yeah so you're talking about your rose at the start i wore about 20 sprays i had as i had to stay in the same clothes for a very long time almost 20 hours i think the whole plane smelt my perfume well lucky passengers eric says feminita dubois doesn't last on me either i always put it in my shopping cart then take it out i adore it though fair enough DB70, I had that with Fahrenheit Parfum. Within minutes, I could hardly smell it. Ashwag says, does she like, uh, oh, Musk Kublai Khan? No, no, that that for her is 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 the next level up. It's a bit too much. Weirdly enough, I, I wore that, I, I was wearing it um, yesterday because I, it was, it ended up being mentioned in something that um, I was writing. Tomasz says, hello from Katowice. Sorry for being late for the show. Nie szkodzi, Tomku. Witamy. Frederick says, uh, Cavalier indeed. Uh, Eric says, love new. A work crush. Oh, new. Sorry. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> From YSL. Yeah, I got it. A work crush. I had had loved it. So I, uh, uh, so I wore it a lot. Fantastic. No, that and I've still I've still got my bottle of the EDP, you know, the hockey puck bottle. And it, it is fantastic. Right. So. We're kind of at the halfway mark. We're beyond the halfway mark. I need to get a move on. So I was going to say uh, thank you very much for tuning into episode 74 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise. What we are doing today is a kind of sort of top 10 perfumes for women, but interpreted as the top 10 perfumes that I most enjoy smelling on Madame Persilaise. So it's kind of by default a top 10 perfumes for women, a list that I tried not to overthunk, okay? I did not overthink this one because I just wanted to kind of go, what are, what are the 10? I think, well, we, we, we've done, uh, we've done, <laughs> somebody's having a conversation with Ashfaq. Let's, let's stick to the same brand because this one, oh, just amazing. This is one of the ones where Madame Persolais must never ever be without a bottle. Um, so as soon as I kind of think that she's getting to the, you know, down to, I, I, have to, I have to get her back up straight away. And I actually think this was the very first uh, Serge Lutin's perfume that we both smelled together and we both kind of went, ooh, this is a good one. So again, modern classic, Ombre Sultan from 1993, uh, composed by Christopher Sheldrake. Um, who actually gets a lot of love in Madame Persilaise's collection, as it turns out, interesting. No other amber quite does it like Ambre Sultan for me, says David. No, and, and yeah, um, me too. Well, from modern ambers, okay, because we're also going to get to a really, really classic amber. Uh, to, ah, see, I've just taken the cap off and... Oh, it, it's, ew, it's, just, it's just so good. The, <clears throat> uh, oh, Ashfaq is still talking to somebody about, about his trip to Mecca. Um, and let's pop that there. So the absolute classic. Do you know, I know that um, Lutins obviously felt that they needed... Uh, something important is missing in this special episode, says Ashwak. What have I forgotten? Quick, quick, think, Persilaise. Have I forgotten? Are you teasing me now? What have I forgotten? Anyway, um, I still prefer these bottles. You know, I think that I know that the newer ones are probably designed to be more eye-catching, but... These, one, these ones, I think, are, are, are smarter. Um, so, oh, this is just... And again, one of those perfumes where the name just works so well. 
because okay, it is an amber composition, so it's got it it, it uses it uses a a, um, a pre-made. Oh, Madame Persolais, of course, says Ashfaq. It's not going to happen. I'm telling you, she's total Greta Garbo about these sorts of things. She just lets me get on with it, and it's not going to happen. <laughs> not anytime soon, anyway. I like the old bottles better too, says Agnieszka. Yeah, there's. I get that the new ones need to be more eye catching, but they're just 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 something a bit a bit heading towards vulgar about them, you know. And I think mostly what it is, it's not so much the size of the bottle, but the size of the label with the large typeface. But anyway, so fantastically named this perfume because because of that sultan. Um, so yeah, it is an amber. It uses a uh, an amber base that that the brand gets sort of from a manufacturer basis as well. It, it's, it's a classic amber base, you know, vanilla, labdanum, lots and lots of labdanum, benzoin. But, but there's real fire in there. And I think it's something to do with the handling of the herbal notes. I'm always struck actually by how aromatic and herbal it is each time I smell it. And you know, because I get things like tarragon, thyme, saffron, you know, nutmeg, cloves, but it's also shot through with tons and tons of smoke, you know, really, really, to me, powerful incense note. And and it's, how much vanilla do you detect in this, says, fra oh, well, a lot, you know, it is, it is very, very definitely vanillic, but beautifully vanillic, smoky vanillic. And it, it's it's just the desert, you know, it's just, um, it's it, it's just the opening of Anthony Minghella's film version of The English Patient, you know, that, that opening scene, which I'm sure I've mentioned on these videos before. Um, where, where in that particular, in that opening shot, the, the the desert is filmed as is 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 as being so curvaceous, um, so much like this sort of sensuous body. Um, oh, it <laughs> fragasm, I think we we'd call it. Um, and comments, comments, comments. Old bottles rule, says floating man. Uh, Schwark says the change of font and a black background certainly makes them more visible. Yeah, and I and I suspect that was part of the the idea. David, the herbal notes are dry and dusty. Yes, perfect word. Thank you. But also serve to add loft to the weightiness of the base, opening everything up. Couldn't agree more. Keith says I like the look of the older bottles, but like being able to get a hundred mils in one bottle. Yeah, absolutely. Tomash says this amber is really enjoyable, but it, but a bit too spicy for me. That's fine. I still prefer Belle Ambre by Jacques Fath. Uh, Ashfaq says, love that movie. Yeah, well, let's not get going on The English Patient. I don't know how many times I've seen that movie. Rizwan says, can you compare Ambra Sultan with uh, Fiora di Ambra by Profumum Roma? I would love to, but I would need to re-familiarize myself with that one. Uh, Anna says, I still have a little bit of EDP Feminite Dubois from Shiseido. Wow. It was my first adult perfume. I smelt it uh, for ages on myself. Floating says, it really is a beautiful fragrance. Shame it's been watered down so much. Well, I I still love it. So I I my man, I haven't smelled like the current current version. Do you mean the current one has been watered down? I don't know. Okay, if we're doing the kind of brand thing, Nelly has just tuned in. Thank you for tuning in. There are two more, two more, and I thought, okay, well, let's not you know, let's not do do a sort of only one allowed per brand. There are two more from this brand, and I've already told you that Coco is not one of them. And and I've already told you also that Bois d'Azile is not one of them. So if we're going to do two more Chanel's, let's see, let's give you a few seconds. Um, I'll give you a clue. This is the next one. So you know what one of these is. Ashfaq says, I, I saw Shiseido bottles being sold under 70. What? Really? Umberto. Fantas you know me too well. This is Coromandel. And this is uh, the EDT of Coromandel, Peggy. Ah, say hello. <laughs> um, again, just so good. This is this is probably one of my favorite patchouli scents. I have the Shiseido one too. I wonder how they compare, says Christina. Yeah, I, I may, maybe ought to do a comparison one. I, I, of course, I don't have the Shiseido bottle. Coromandel, which now also is only available as an eau de parfum. Love that, says Peggy. Actually, yeah, as soon as you said that, I thought I, I remembered that you, you love Coromandel. Misia says olfactive story. No, no. Misia, I think, is a little bit too lipsticky violety for, for Madame Persolais. This is, this, this, this is just heaven. This is perfection. Um, 
Let's let's spread these guys out a little bit because I can. I'm trying to see how much room I've got. Let's put this here. Oh. Mm. Oh, nice. David says Coromandel is one of the few perfumes I've smelled that comes across as truly incandescent. But do you mean incandescent as in the sense of being on fire? Because I don't particularly get that, but like in a kind of transformative sense, you know, it's, 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 it's... So, famously, that kind of white chocolate note at the top, of course, to, uh, um, patchouli has a, has a chocolate inflection as well, as in glowingness or light from within, says David. Oh, okay, yeah, thank you very much. Not that I'm checking up on your usage of vocab, but, you know, just want to be clear. Um, the English teacher in me never, never quite um, switches off. Uh, here, the, 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 the chocolatiness of the patchouli is somehow turned into white chocolate, you know, sort of powdery. Another one that isn't the same anymore unless you're getting the parfum. Okay, okay. Um, and then very, very quickly, th this one also, unsurprisingly, has all reminds me of the Serge Lutin's Borneo. The Borneo that comes with the date, and I can't remember what the date is. Is it, is it 1834 or something like that? Again, another beautiful, beautiful patchouli scent, not dissimilar uh, from the uh, from from the Chanel from Coromandel. This is, you know, this is. Have you tried the extra says Ashfaq? No, I was aware that it came out last year. Um, I would really, really, really like to try it. One day, maybe when I can go back inside a shop again, when when those of us can go into. But anyway, you know, let's not belittle the situation. There's a reason why we're not going into shops. A very, very very sad reason, um, as we all know. But this then very, very quickly moves into the patchouli, which somehow manages to be both earthy and sweet and clean. And I said both, but I mentioned three things, so never mind, just go with it. Um, but, but I prefer Borneo on myself, says Eric, but Coromandel has heavenly sillage, yes. And I think that's what I like about it. And this is one of these perfumes that manages contrasts so well. Um, because, like I said, it's got that earthiness, but it's also clean. It's got the darkness, but somehow it's also sweet. And something about it is just completely like, you know, snuggle up and, you know, let's cover ourselves with a blanket and, and I don't know, settle in front of some romantic movie on the TV or something like that. It's, it's a very, very, very inviting that is what it is and i need to get a move on because i have 12 minutes basically to do three more and i didn't even talk about one of them so much so let's 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 go up into another gear this is one of the ones that that one of the two that i thought maybe you might be surprised by because i really 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 love this on madame Persolais. Don't judge. I know. I know this one doesn't get a huge amount of love in the perfume community, and and somebody mentioned Dune before, and I kind of said watch this space, but this is specifically the sensuel version, the sensuel flanker of Chanel Allure. Um, you can see that I like smelling. Um, love that Allure says Peggy. Thank you very much. There you go. Um, you can see that I do quite like smelling ambery things on her, and this is again another amber, but. Uh, this comes with uh, a, a sort of green note um, and and also maybe a kind of chocolatey sort of patchouli-ish type note. Look, this is, this is, I'm running the risk of turning this into the Chanel show now. Um, th this is, I have OG Allure, but never try the Sensuel. Okay. Um, it, this is, th this is a kind of, you know, if we're, if we're sort of talking daytime, nighttime, which I don't like to do, but this is the sort of heavy amber that you could wear out um, if you were going to be interacting with lots of people, mixing with lots of people. This is, this is the sort of restrained amber. Um, probably actually in some ways the most restrained perfume out of these 10. I mean, yeah, easily, even though, you know, it, it certainly makes its presence known, um, but 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 it, it it is probably the quietest one you know if you some people like talking about you know office scents which i just think whatever but you know it, it's the kind of office chanel in a way or um the daytime chanel 
so it's it's a kind of yes okay we're dressing down a little bit or we're dressing um or we're dressing in a way that, that, that shows you know we're sort of got, got to be in polite society and business like but we don't just want to like spray on i don't know or parfumé or or tever from bulgari we want we want something that's got a bit of oomph um and i guess that freshness is is achieved through 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 the inclusion of the green note and and i always um love it on her but truth be told it's one of the ones that she again will tend to wear for me because she knows that i like it and so uh two to go uh and i missed some comments uh, so still a few people talking about Coromandel. Ashwag says, for me, Kashi from Parfumeur du Monde, du Monde has taken over the top place from Coromandel. Okay. Um, Ashwag has never tried this Allure Sensuelle. Peggy says, as a comparison, Chloe Love, same vibe, but subtly sweeter. Okay. And Ashwag says, quieter than that watered down Garlin. Do you mean the, the Nama? Oh, yeah, because that Nama still has got quite, quite a sillage, that, that the EDP of the Nama. So we've got two to go. And this one is one that, again, maybe very few would have, you, would have been able to guess. And I just love the fact that I've still got it in this bottle. Because look, this is a pretty original, pretty sort of vintage Tower perfume, Andy Tower. And it's uh, Le Maroc Pour Elle. It's not the original, original bottles, but it's going back quite a few years. I mean, look at, look at that, look at that colour. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? And it actually leaves a little bit of its colour behind, almost like it's, you know, turmeric or something something like that. Um, I love, love, love Le Maroc Porel. This was the first perfume that Andy Tower made, although, he, of course, he had to wait for his second perfume to really achieve uh, huge success. Yeah, Ashwag, look at that colour. I know. Isn't it fantastic? You kind of want to be careful about spraying it. If you haven't uh, spray, uh, tried Le Maroc, Please, please do check it out, because I think it. I think it's everything like like lovely youth dew. Says Eric. Yes, actually, I hadn't thought of that. Absolutely, you're right. Like a black musk says floating man. Let's pop that here. Let's give it pride of place. Will you see that if I put it pop it there? Yeah. Wow, that color. Wonder if it's sprayed on the clothes. Well, I haven't. But if you look there, is the image clear enough, sensitive enough for you to see that that has actually stained the paper? So much oil says Christine. Absolutely, absolutely. And this was oh. It's just heavenly. Le Maroc means Morocco. Yes, absolutely. It says, says Lolita. Um, it's so rich. It's so rich. It It is just... I haven't smelt it for a while. Um, and and, and, and it, it comes from a time... I, I note down when it was released. Uh, 2005. So it's already almost 15 years old now. Um, it comes from a time when independent perfumery, you know, so-called niche perfumery, really had lots and lots of interesting things to say. There are tons and tons of independent perfumery brands out there that still have got lots of interesting things to say, you know, like Papillon. Um, but a lot of, as you know, as you don't need me to tell you, also a lot of independent brands that are just basically jumping on bandwagons or doing the same sorts of things that the mainstream does and, and you know, charging three times as much. This Andy Tower is still the real deal, and Le Maroc is 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 absolutely the real deal. And I I kind of think that that opening trilogy that he did, you know, because because he did Le Maroc, then he did L'Air du Désert, and then he did Lone Star Memories. Just imagine, just like you know, doing those three as your as your first three perfumes. I mean, how does it compare with the Blue Bottle? Says I I don't know because I have not smelt the the, the current iteration of this. But knowing Andy and knowing his integrity, it will be as close to this as regulations, standards, etc. Uh, would allow him to make it. The colour of the juice reminds me of Cherie a little bit, says Lodi. Yeah, again, you're right. Although this is looking at it here is darker. So this is this is like a really, really powerful, intoxicating, really intoxicating, heady combination of sort of orange blossom and jasmine, really, really indolic jasmine with fantastic woody base resinous, you know, like a sort of ambergris base, really, really nicely handled top notes that feel herbal. Um, it's, it, and, and again, it's, it's very, very well named because there is, 
there is something of the feel of, of Marrakesh about it, you know, when you when you go to the Jamal Fana and the sun setting um, and, and just that heat and that tremendous energy um, is, is really, really encapsulated here. Is it widely available? I've never heard of this one, says Tomasz. Well, I know that Tower's work is available online in Poland through, is it Galilu, Galilu Perfumery? They, they used to stock Tower, but if you go onto uh, their, the Tower website, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put the names of all of the perfumes in the video description a little bit later on so you'll see exactly how it's spelled. Um, uh, if you go on the website, uh, Andy's always very, very clear about which countries he ships to. So with one to go, what are your guesses, people? With one to go, let me see some comments. Uh, Ashfaq says, in complete agreement, he stopped his um, Instagram account for a while, probably because some annoying influencers were bugging him for free bottle samples. Yeah, I mean, do, do check out Andy Tower's blog. He's always very, very... Uh, um, thanks for this piece of information. He's always very outspoken about um, his experience of dealing with people. But last, with, with, with four minutes to go, with four minutes to go, right, I can't wait for you to guess. It has to be the Queen. It has to be... How, how, could, I, how could I not have Shalimar here? Looking very elegant in, in her current garb, I think. Uh, so this is, this is the current EDP. Um, love the Tower blog, says Eric. Yeah, the Tower, the, it's, it's really good. I, I always try to check it out. I haven't been able to do so lately. So this is uh, a classic from 1925, composed by Jacques Garlin. Yes, to Shalem, Marseille, Ashfaq, and Peggy. Um, uh, one of the most influential amber compositions. Sometimes we call it, you know, oriental. Animal bum, says Peggy. <laughs> I know that we're trying to move away from saying oriental because people are sort of worried about the fact that using the term oriental isn't as, as culturally sensitive as we ought to be. In, in France, they would just call it a, an, an amber. Uh, have I put it on there? Um, uh, those who have smelt Coty's Emeraude, and you can smell it at the Osmotech in Versailles, will see exactly how they're connected. Uh, as Lolita says, the Queen, oh, geez, this is so good. And I love the extrait of this. Animal Bum, what Peggy's referring to there is a really, really no-holds-barred civet note but it's so good. You somehow just think, yeah, animal bum. <laughs> you know, this is what I love about perfumery. Do you wear it yourself as well, says Frederick? No, I don't, because to me, it is so much Madame Persolaise. But I'll tell you what I do wear. I wear Mousse Gravageur sometimes from Frederick Mal, which is like a, a modernized um, Chalimar. It is totally a modernized Chalimar. So this is classic, classic amber. Um, so again, you know, benzoin, lambdin and vanilla. But the thing that just lifts this and sparkles it is its huge, huge, huge dosage of bergamot. In fact, some people say that Jacques Garlin pretty much used bergamot as, as, a, as, a, as a solvent in this, you know, just sort of added it as though it, as, as though it was like adding the alcohol. And fantastic herbal notes. And this is just, this is just the sort of stuff that, you know, I, I couldn't possibly share with you because then YouTube would slap like an age rating on this and say that I can't share the video with anybody. It was like, is this suitable for children? No, definitely not suitable for children. But for me, th this, is, this, is the, this is the perfume, Shalimar. Um, and I think it's still in pretty good shape. You know, I'm smelling this now and I'm thinking I kind of need to put it away from myself for a little bit otherwise, otherwise, you know, I, I just have to kind of go, oh, please give me a moment. Um, uh, Eric says, I would love to have a discussion about the term Oriental sometime when we have more time. Absolutely. Or we could have a bit of a discussion in the comments below. David says, in another video you mentioned Shalimar using bergamot almost as a solvent, and I always think of that now when smelling it. It's such fantastic stuff. Jinx, says David. <laughs> there you go. So, have we made it? Yeah, pretty much. I've got less than a minute to say my goodbyes. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. I hope you're all being kind to each other. I hope you're all safe. I hope you're all looking after each other. Uh, uh, supporting each other during this time. I know that I definitely get a lot out of d doing these videos because it sort of gives me a little bit of normality. Things happen when wearing it, says Peggy. To some extent, it says about the world, the Pakistani garden, Mughal Empress, French florals and florals. Yeah, yeah okay, so that's the Oriental thing. Uh, so I will be back in due course, probably with a more normal video where we talk about new releases. But if you have some more ideas for top tens or top fives or anything like that, please um, 
uh, please let me know uh, and leave comments. Please subscribe to my channel um, and I will hope to see you soon. Okay, be good. Take care. Bye now.